Hello, Netting Addict. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 20 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma, and you can find me all over the internet as Selma's Nets. Well, that's mostly on Instagram and Ravelry, but everything matches the podcast now. I hope you're well. I am, although I did have a pretty busy week, let's say. I did manage to <clears throat> knit some things. I'm sorry. I have a bit of a sore throat today. Um, I was saying, yes, I did manage to knit a bit today. I wanted to see you now because although I am I was supposed to plan next week if I, if I go by the a podcast every fortnight um, thing, but next week I will be away and I really, really don't think that I will be able to film. And if I don't do that today, then it will be three weeks without seeing each other and it's going to be way, way too long for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> but I can only assume that it would be way too long for you as well. Anyway, I did uh, knit some things, so I will show them to you right now. Grab your whips, grab your cup of tea, and let's go. So let's start with the finished objects. I have one and a half because well, one is a real project and the other one is just a, just a fun thing. It's not even really an object actually. <laughs> anyway, so the first one I showed you last weekend, I had, um, I had just started the ribs and it's the Ridgeline hat by Tin Can Knits. It's not a free pattern. I found it on Ravelry when I was looking for a colorwork hat with actually matching mittens. To tell you the truth, it's a present. So that's why I need to show it to you today. So I will just try it on real quick to show you. What I liked about the construction of it is that it's, um, it makes for a, a fitted hat, you know, not a slouchy hat, which was what I wanted for this one today. So yeah, it's very, it's very nice. It's comfortable and it looks really fun with a pom-pom. So I made it with um, Ulysse yarn from Dererum Natura, which was very nice to use. I can't remember if last week in the English version of the podcast, I also mixed up the colors when I told you about them. I know that I did in the French one because the um, ball bands were mixed up as well and I, I didn't check beforehand. So anyway, this gray one is called Goelong, that's seagull in English. This one is sel, so that's salt, the white. And the blue one is um, baleine bleu, so that's blue wave. Yeah. I followed the pattern pictures for the color of the pom-pom. I went for the same color as the top of the hat. I think that's what looks best. It was uh, fast and easy, although I was dreading a bit the part where there would be three colors on one row, but it was just on the one row, so it was nothing unbearable. And in the end, I just had, you know, I knit mostly English style, but when I need color work, I do um, English style with my main color and continental with my uh, contrasting colors. So in that case, I just had two colors on my left finger. That's it. Takes a bit of getting used to, but it works. It works. I blocked the hat on um, on a balloon, actually. I, I saw that on um, on the Instagram account of Pip from the Tips in It's podcast. Um, she's Ramsey Baggins on Instagram. And I saw her blocking hats this way and I thought, I'm so dumb. How have I never thought of that? It's brilliant. So you just inflate it, but you, I soaked the hat in a bit of well, in water with a bit of soak soap and um, and white vinegar because I didn't want the blue to bleed onto the others, but it worked perfectly well. So I just soaked it and 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 then I put it to dry on the balloon, which was um, which was put on a on a glass basically. And it dried that way and it was really fine. So I think I will do the same um, with every single one of my hats in the future. The second finished object is actually, so it is a fun project. It's a small swatch, which I made using a uh, leftover from um, De Rerum Natura Ulysse and leftover Shetland and leftover Black Welsh Mountain from um, the zigzag hat, which I made before Edinburgh. 
the, the it's it's a fun thing it's actually to offer it to someone as a farewell present you know it's a bit more personal than a postcard i will attach a small label to it obviously um it was a fun project i did it last night and to be honest the back of it looks better in daylight than last night when i actually wave in the weaved in the ends because it was pretty ugly but it's okay now it's, uh, it will never be perfect but it's okay given the uh, weird work which i had to do to bring everything uh, to hold everything in the back you know um it was knit flat which was a bit of a challenge as well because color work knit flat is um a little confusing sometimes but yeah, it was good fun. The sheep comes from the chart for the Babel hat by Donna Smith, which I haven't made yet, but I saw it on several of my friends and it just looks amazing. So I thought, um, I thought I would use this chart and, um, and I will make a hat for myself next season. So in the future, anyway. Um, what's fun is that since these two colors are slightly thicker yarns than than the gray one you know it's a bit um i don't know if you can see that but no when you touch it it's it's it it comes out a bit let's say and it's funny anyway so that was my um fun project from last night it's not perfect but i think it would be a nice souvenir that's it for what I finished last week or this week. We will go on to the um, my works in project, which is actually the one work in project, because with the hat which I had to finish because I'm offering it tonight, um, and this project which I, which I'm going to show you right now, it's the lunar phase uh, mystery cows. Um, I didn't have time for anything else. I didn't even have time to finish clue three. Anyway. I will put a short musical break like last time so that people who don't want to get spoiled don't get spoiled. <laughs> So the lunar phase mystery call is on, now on to the final clue and as I, was, as I was saying I didn't have time to finish the third one but I did block the first two. So this is the first clue and I was right last week. It, they are slightly smaller than they should be but I think it won't matter that much and what matters is that they actually fit together let's say second clue and the third clue which is actually the same construction as the first one so when I when I block the first one yeah I didn't weave in any of the ends but I will do that when it when the time comes um when i block it i will ma i will make sure that it's the same size as the first clue because when you work them together you need them to be the same size i think there's a question of symmetry in there um i went to check the fourth clue which is mostly about getting them together and um i have no i still have no idea what it's going to look like in the end so we will see i saw that there are short rows um, but that's, that's it. It's going to be a big surprise, I think. Back to our regular program. I have no, not done anything else this week, but I do have a um, couple of purchases to show you. I ordered some yarn online, which I could have gotten in Edinburgh. And in the case of this one, I actually did, but I lost it. It's, it's a ball of um, Jameson and Smith Shetland Supreme 2 ply lace weight. It's 100% real Shetland wool, 25 grams, 200 meters. Um, yeah, it's very fine lace weight. For my um, challenge this year of learning how to knit Shetland um, lace. I don't think I want to lace shawl just yet, but I, that's why I got only the one ball. Um, I'm going to start with a ribbon to get used to reading the, the charts and, and um, the construction of, of uh, Shetland lace patterns. I just 
I bought one ball in Edinburgh, but I lost it somewhere. I have no idea. Our Airbnb host didn't find it in the room, so I can only guess that it fell when I was in the podcast lounge at some point and it was on top of my bag and it just... I don't know where it went. And I was a bit annoyed, but fortunately it was not one of the most expensive purchases which I'd done. But yeah, still. And I only got one ball because I don't want to get dozens or at least half a dozen before I am, I am actually sure that I can manage them. The second purchase I made was these four balls, uh, well, yeah, balls of, of two ply jumper weight by Jameson and Smith again. This shade is number one and this one is 134. So it's a bur nice burgundy red. I will use them to make the Shine Mittens by Pia Kammerborn um, from the Kammerbornia podcast. They are just really nice color work mittens and I think I'm going to love making them. I know the season is almost gone for mittens but I don't mind. Also next month I'm going to um, Scotland for a week and I think that it might be necessary to actually have something to cover my hands then. So I'm going to start working on them soon. I did buy more yarn, although I have more festivals coming soon, but well, I'm going through quite a lot at the moment, so I thought, just go for it. Afterwards, I will just have to find uh, what to make with um, leftovers, but that's a different story. I signed up for a different kind of call in French, this one. Um, it's called the uh, Crime du Tricot Express. Um, knit along so that's the the crime of the knitting express it's uh, it's it's about mysteries and you have three teams actually you have the Miss Marple the Poirot and the Sherlock Holmes teams um, it goes I think the signing up ends tomorrow so that might be today when the podcast comes out but in case you want to participate into a French speaking cal would be good fun um, I'm part of the Sherlock Holmes team, uh, although I did hesitate quite a bit with the Poirot team, but I went for Sherlock in the end. Basically, it will last until the end of June and you will have um, um, investigations to make and, and um, riddles to solve. And I think it's going to be really, really fun. There are a lot of participants, but it's going to be uh, very nice to solve the riddles. To have more brains working. Uh, you get points for the, the numbers of meters you actually knit in your projects and you get bonus points for the riddles and for um, if the projects you knit are well related to the theme of the car. Um, yeah, at least it's a, it's a little more free than having a set project for a car, which is very nice as well. I'm going to go back to my um, secret uh, sweater as soon as I'm done with the mystery cal because I want to finish it by the end of May because it's also part of a cal um, which ends at the end of May and I think it would be a shame given how fast I knitted to um, to miss the end of the cal but anyway that's um, I will tell you more in the pro in a future episode so um, that's basically it for today. It was a much quicker episode than uh, the previous ones, but if I go to on well, if I decide at some point to go on a weekly basis, uh, it is going to be shorter episodes, obviously. <clears throat> so we will see. For now, um, the next one will be in two weeks because, as I was saying at the beginning of the episode, next week I'm going to be away and I will not be able to film. But I will most likely be able to knit quite a bit, so it's going to be nice as well. Um, I will have more stuff to show you. Well, <clears throat> that's it for today, for good. I hope you enjoyed watching this episode. It was nice for me to, um, to film it, even if I had less things to show you. But then maybe it allows me to be a bit more focused, you know. I wish you a very good day or evening or night, depending on when you're watching this. <clears throat> I hope you have a lovely week, lovely weekend. And I'm saying goodbye until next time soon. Enjoy your knitting, enjoy your sewing, take care of yourself. Bye.